Hey there, so Apple has just released iOS 15 and iPad OS 15, and there's lots of really cool productivity features in these new updates that I think could be really good for you to help you with your business productivity or work-life balance. So let's jump into it. So this video is sponsored by Buckle and Band. So if you own an Apple Watch, you know it can look a little too techy at times. So if you want to stand out from the crowd and turn your Apple Watch into more of a luxury timepiece, check out buckleandband.com for some beautiful luxury handmade leather Apple Watch straps. Also, if you go to the gym or if you work out, check out the hybrid silicone and leather straps. They have silicone on the bottom and leather on top. So they're really perfect if you want to match your Apple Watch with your shoes, or if you want to have a different style from your work day to some evening wear. Hey there, welcome to the video. So today I want to do something a little bit different. As you know, I concentrate on business and tech and this video is a little bit of both. There's gonna be some things here that I think are really gonna help your productivity if you're an iPhone or an iPad user. Now, Apple have just launched the um, iOS 15 and iPad OS 15. And the problem with a, an iOS update is that you update it and then you turn your phone back on and it kind of looks normal, but there's actually some really, really cool new productivity features in these versions. So I've been delving into all of the new features and whilst there's absolutely tons, these are just some of my top maybe five or six uh, productivity features baked into the new versions. So let's jump into it. First of all, there's something I wanna show you in the camera, which is so cool. Okay, so this first feature I really, really love. If you're out and about and you take a picture of a sign, you'll see something new that happens. So we've got this picture here, it's got some text and some information on it. But what you can do now, if you go to review that photo, you can actually select and highlight live text. So look, there we go. I've highlighted that phone number and I can copy and paste that to an email or a text and it will work with all of the text on any page. So super handy, maybe you want to copy a restaurant's menu and email it to a friend, you can do that all now with the iPhone app. So another thing you can use it for is translation as well. So I've got this photo of a beer here and I'm wondering what this text means here at the bottom of the beer. So you can just select that like so, press the little arrow, press translate and we can see that Weizenbeer means wheat beer in English. So a really handy productivity tool if you're ever abroad for your work or your travels. So the next feature is really cool if you ever take notes on your iPad. Now before, uh, if you were doing some research and you wanted to get your notes app up, you would have to close this down, you would have to find the notes app and then start a new note. But now with your finger or your Apple Pencil, you can simply swipe up from the bottom right hand corner and it will start a new quick note. Now what's great about this new quick note is that not only can you sort of scribble and make your notes like you normally would, but it detects the page you're on in the background. So you can see here we're at editorskeys.com and I can just click this icon here that says add link and it will add that link in. And then we can continue to make our notes like so. And then if we want to, we can swipe it away. I can go to The Verge. Let's just say I'm looking at the new Fitbit they've got on the website. I can bring this back in and you can even do things like drag and drop. So let's just hold down on this. I can drop that into this note. You can also see we've got a link here that's just popped up and we can add a link into the verge. And what you notice there, it didn't put that link at the top, it actually put it in line with the research I'm doing. So if you ever wanna get back to where you were at, if you ever wanna find this photo again, you've now got a note and you can tap this when you're in notes and it will take you back to that page. So it's just a really, really quick and handy way of doing research and doing quick notes. And it's 10 times easier than it was before. And I just really love that ability to add in links. So that's the new productivity feature for notes. Okay, so whilst we're in the iPad, another little productivity tip I wanna show you just quickly is the three dots up here. Now this makes it a bit more like a Mac or a PC. If you tap this, you now get simpler icons to do uh, a split screen or a, a kind of a sidebar um, view on the iPad. So for example, if we just tap this sidebar icon here, this moves off to the side. We can now choose another app. I'm gonna choose Maps. And then it will put these side by side. So you can just multitask a little bit better. If you want, you can tap these again and you can move that to sidebar. So you've now got the verge full screen. And then we can just swipe this off screen when we're done or bring it back in. So it just makes working on the iPad 
a little bit more productive again. You could always do that, but it was just much harder to actually activate that look. So next up is a new feature called focus mode. Now, a lot of us, if you're doing any kind of work or business, sometimes you just need to get into the zone and you just want all of your other distractions gone. Well, there's this new feature called focus and you can activate it by pulling down to go into the control center. And then what you can see here, if you tap focus, you've now got sleep, personal and work. So I've set up the work one here. So I'm gonna show you this in the settings. So what you can do, is you can allow notifications from particular groups of people and particular apps. So in this case, I've got people that I would speak to regularly during the day, and then I could disallow um, notifications from maybe friends who I can't really speak to during the day because of work. And then in apps, you can see here, I've got the calendar, I've got Gmail, I've got Shopify, I've got photos because we use that a lot for um, product photography and things like that here. So those are the apps that will uh, be allowed to send through notifications and it's going to turn off games, Instagram, Facebook, all of those kind of things whilst I'm at work. Now of course you can change any of these depending on your work uh, but they're just really really handy and you can turn them on for an hour or you can have them come on between nine and five so when you leave work and you want to go home you can actually do vice versa you can have a personal version of focus that allows you to have Facebook, uh, Instagram, your game notifications to come through, but maybe it switches off your work emails. It gives you a bit more personal time. So that's the new feature, which is in both iPhone and iPad. And the great little thing about this as well is if you turn it on on your iPhone, it will activate it on your iPad as well. So next up is a new productivity feature that you can use with the camera and Spotlight. So Spotlight, if you're, you're not aware, is the tool that you use when you swipe down on your iPhone or iPad's home screen, you get this search box that pops up. Now I use this sometimes when I wanna quickly find an app. So you can see here I've typed in Google and it brings up all of my Google apps. But how you can use it now, and I think you're really gonna like this, is let's say you're at a work meeting and you're writing pages and pages of handwritten notes and it could be typed out notes as well. But let's just say you're writing loads of handwritten notes and you get back and you take a snap of, of your notes and a few days go by and you just cannot remember where that person talked about shares, but you know you knew they were mentioning shares. So what you can do, I've just written a note here that says pick up new camera at 2 p.m. I've just, of course, this is just two lines here. But if I now type in the word camera on here, of course it will bring up the camera app. But if you, if you slide down, you can see it says photos from apps and you can see this bit of paper here. So if I open that, not only does it show me that photo, but it highlights the word camera as well. So as I say, if you had five pages of notes and someone was mentioning shares, all you need to do is type in the word shares and not only will it find that note and that piece of paper, but it will find the exact part in the notes where the word shares has been written down. And my handwriting is really, really poor. It's like a baby's handwriting. So, you know, this is a great, great tool for those work meetings. Okay, next up is the Safari browser and there's some big additions here. So on the iPhone, they've actually changed the design completely and the search bar is now at the bottom. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. On the iPad, I'm just gonna jump across here to the iPad. And there's some big changes here as well. They've actually made a new tab section up here and you've got the options. If you press the four little squares on the top right, you can actually create tabbed groups. So let's just say you've kind of got a workspace laid out like I've got here, I've got my emails, I've got the script for this video, I've got the edits key site. I can create all of those tabs and pop them into one group and then maybe create another group for a different research project. So that's really good to see. But the big thing that I've been looking forward to is extensions. So now if we tap up the top here, this little jigsaw piece, you can see I've now got one password and honey extensions just like I've got on my desktop version of Safari. And this is really good because before with 1Password, uh, it's an app I use for all of my passwords. You had to open the app or kind of sign in and get it to use Face ID. Now it's just built into the browser like it is on my desktop. Same with Honey. If I'm on a website like Editor's Keys and buying something, you can use Honey to get a discount code for almost any website online. So it's really, really good. You've now got extensions. You can manage extensions here and add new ones. And if you've installed the app for the program that you often like, you'll see now a lot of them are updating and they do have these new Safari extensions. So definitely worth a look. If you're using any extensions on your desktop web browser and you've always wanted them on your iPad, it's now possible. 
Next up is FaceTime. Now, during the pandemic, we've all been using video calling a lot more to either ring friends and family or work colleagues. And FaceTime this time around has had a big update. The first major one is that you can now call friends on Android devices. So even though FaceTime isn't available as an app on Android, you can now create a link within FaceTime on an iPhone or iPad, and then you can give your friend that link on an Android or a Chromebook or any other Windows device, and they can join you in a FaceTime call. So that's a really good thing to see. Next up is a feature that's already available in programs like Zoom, but it's finally come to FaceTime. And that's the fact that you can blur the background for one, and you can change the microphone option so you can cut out some background noise. So I'll show you how to do it because it's actually a bit tricky and they don't make it too obvious on what you need to do. So I'm gonna create a new FaceTime. I'm gonna call Rob in the other room and uh, let's FaceTime video Rob. Hey Rob, how are we doing? So what we can do in this new version of FaceTime, they've now got the option to blur the background. So if we tap uh, this little star icon here, when you tap that, you'll see that you have this new icon in the top left to blur the background. So if I tap that, Rob should be able to see that the background's now slightly out of focus. And it does actually quite a good job. If you're in Zoom, you'll notice it doesn't really cut you out very well and it looks like you're on a, a dodgy green screen. So this works quite well um, for the iPad. So I'm gonna take that off. Secondly, you've now got options for your microphone input. So how you can change this, if you wanna reduce the background noise, you can swipe down on Control Center and you'll see you get this mic mode standard. You can tap that and then you can do voice isolation. So maybe if you've got the kids in the background or you're in a noisy office, you can change this section here to go to voice isolation and this will change your microphone and make your voice much clearer in a busy environment. Cool, cheers that Rob. Now, if you've used Apple Maps before, you'll know it's not quite as good as Google Maps, but there's some real big improvements here that aren't really product productivity improvements, but they definitely help the Maps experience. So I'm in San Francisco here because they haven't really uh, improved the, the one for the UK yet. It is coming. But you can see here, when you zoom into the map, you've got crossing showing, you've got little palm trees and trees, you've even got kind of little cartoon stylized icon buildings. Uh, but the thing I really like, a bit like Google Street View, you can tap these pair of binoculars and you can actually walk down the street. So if I make that full screen, you can see if you double tap that, it will kind of animate across. It won't just suddenly jump to the next photo. It's almost like you're walking down the street. And the quality is actually really, really good. So we can go across there, jump across the street, and you've got a really high res image of that building there. Now also what's coming to Apple Maps is AR, augmented reality walking routes. Now I can't show you this today because it's not out in the UK, but if you check out this example from Apple's website, you can see instead of just following a map with your face down, you can hold your iPhone up and you can follow the arrows on the map and it will point you the correct street to go down. So really handy if you've got that work meeting. So the next one isn't strictly a productivity tip, but it could be really helpful in your day-to-day -day work. So uh, Apple have a new weather app and you can see it looks a little bit different. Uh, we've got Manchester here. There's a lot more detail in this weather app. You can see it says cloudy conditions expected until five. Uh, you've got your 10 day forecast. You've got air pollution meters there. You've got a temperature graph. You've got UV index, sunset, rainfall, humidity, visibility, and air pressure. So lots and lots of details. But the one thing I think is gonna be really, really handy, let's say you're inside a studio or you're inside work and it's throwing down with rain. The app can actually notify you when it either starts or stops raining in your area. So all you need to do is when you're in the weather app, tap the three little buttons here on the right hand side. And then where you would normally get the positions to add new locations, you can see this new notification here. It says stay dry. Get notifications when rain or snow is starting or stopping near you. And you can turn this notification on so you can be notified when it's just about to start raining. So that'll keep you dry on your next work meeting. 
So that's a roundup of my top productivity tips with iOS 15 for the iPhone and iPad OS. Let me know what you think of those in the comments section below. And have you found anything in this new version of iOS that's really helped you with your work? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks so much for watching. And if you wanna see more content like this, or if you've got interest in stocks and shares, business, or even a Tesla, uh, make sure you check out the other playlists on the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.